My name is Erin, I'm 22 years old, and I was diagnosed with FOP when I was around 10 months old. From what I can recall from when I was little, I couldn't lift up my arms above my head. Soon after that, I wasn't able to look up anymore, to look up at the stars or the sky. From there on, my back, my neck, and my shoulders got more stiff. Up until high school, I was able to do quite a lot. About a year after I graduated high school, I had a flare-up in my hip, and that lasted for a little over a year. For like a few months straight, I would just wake up crying because I was in so much pain. When you find that your child has a, a disease, you just don't know what it's gonna do to them, how they're gonna grow. Fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva means that muscle, tendon, or connective tissue turns to bone, rendering you immobile. I was constantly touching her back because she had flare-ups in her back. She would get these lumps and bumps. It's just a very unpredictable disease. I had realized it was just easier for me to use a wheelchair to get around. I found it even more difficult to go out on my own and if I dropped something, I'd have to ask a stranger to pick it up or if I needed help opening a door, I'd have to like wait for somebody and then ask them to help me. This was at the point in my life where it really affected me in ways that it hadn't before. I guess I'm just walking normally, being able to go upstairs without having to stop every two steps to take a huge breath. You know, she's trying to find ways to be independent and this disease can take that from you. So we're always adapting to help her find her independence. To watch as her mom, I'm just so excited for her because there is so much out there. Just because she has FOP doesn't mean that she can't have a life and it's only going to make things, her appreciation of it, better. I think one of the things I've learned about myself is that I need to pace myself when I'm in a flare-up. I can't force myself to, you know, just keep going. After having a few incidences where I was kind of stuck and I needed help, I started to look into getting a service dog and I got Pine. He helps me turn lights on and off. He'll pick things up for me if I drop them. He can open and close doors, open and close drawers, everything really. I was able to go back out on my own. I soon got a job. He's really given me my independence back. Watching her flourish and be independent is just everything that I've wanted for her. FOP, I think, has taught her an appreciation for pain, for um, her future. She has an appreciation for life. As I've gotten older, I started to really understand that there's not just like the actual loss of mobility, it's also like, it's like you're losing something, like a part of you. I've really had to go through that grieving process and take everything in and I really have to adapt and change, sometimes change my life. You really have to advocate for yourself. The FOP community is just a really great community because everybody's really welcoming. They can help you and hold your hand and guide you, you know, through it. That was, I think, motivation for me. Just because your child has FOP doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. People in the International FOP Association are amazing and reach out to the doctors, um, the FOP specialists. My hope for the future is that I can really, I can have a job where I can really impact other people and really help them. And so whether that's in like the rare disease community or if it's in the disability community or just helping anyone really um, who I guess struggles similarly with the same things that I do. I think a huge success for me is really embracing everything that I still have and not taking what I had for granted or you know, cherishing what I had and really living in the moment because tomorrow could be a completely different day. <laughs>